please welcome Roger Cashew. On cello, please welcome Wick Simmons. On violin, Yoni Avi Batat. On oud, please welcome Kane Mathis. And on clarinet, please welcome Brian Kroc. Welcome back, the Alexandria Ceremonial Police Orchestra. Gentlemen, take it away. Well, it's Cuban connection is one of the basic themes of the show. And I feel like after the past 18 months that we've all experienced, we can really hone in on how much we need each other. Um, I also feel like it's one of the basic needs of the human race, uh, along with water, air and food, right? Like we need each other in order to survive. And that has all become very much more clear to us uh, in, in the recent past. Um, and as far as Dean is concerned, I feel like it's she's been yearning for this, uh, to feel alive for some time. And when this unexpected, beautiful encounter happens, she, she there's a small tilt in that direction where she comes to life. And it's because of our shared experience uh, as human beings and how we need each other. Sasson? Well, you, you may say that the natural um, emotion and the natural status of people should be uh, of connection and, uh, and the feeling for each other. And the problem in life is that uh, we, are, we have so many borders and so many uh, boundaries and so many inner uh, inhibitions that uh, uh, prevent us from doing it and, and uh, so the normal way of life as i see it as i think everybody should see it is is connection between between among people um and and this show uh, show uh, give a chance to the fact that to dare and to do it uh, i think uh, dina's character is uh, she she's she's the one who initiated the the possibility of these people uh, the, the Israelis and, and the Egyptian 
to spend the time together. And uh, she didn't have in mind that it would develop to such extent, but uh, she initi initiated it. And, and uh, uh, all the characters in the play uh, have some experience uh, because of that. And I, I'm sure uh, the audience get it as well. How about you, Joe? To a certain extent, I think there's, it's an analogy for what we do every night as performers is that there's a, a thousand plus total strangers. And um, as a human species, I think we have more in common than we have different. That's a part. We inherit our histories, but we have these fundamental needs for this connection as a species, as a social animal. And so every night there are these thousands of strangers in the audience. And if we succeed, we make a connection, however small, however significant, um, that is a blessing. And it, it happens in the show and it happens every night. Kobe. Hi. Um, yeah, I, I, I think there's something really beautiful about um, being given the choice to connect and, and, and choosing to connect, even though it might be easier to retreat uh, back into your camp. I think that there's something really special about um, seeing a piece where people are, are, are hungry for it, even though they didn't know they were, um, and they, they are willing to, to lean in and, and listen to each other and, and work to connect across language barriers, cultural, bar cultural barriers. Um, I think there's such beauty in, in that simple act of, like, of leaning forward instead of leaning away, um, which I think is really powerful and meaningful. And, and like Joe said, just um, being in the theater with people and, 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 and everyone together having a collective experience um, all at the same time is something that Janet mentioned, you know, we haven't been able to do for a really long time. And so just by nature of us being able to be in a room together and, and, and share that experience is so special. And to have it be a story about human connection makes it, makes it all the more so. so. Well, I think uh, this show is, is um, apparently and obviously not tip, uh, Broadway typical show. Uh, we, we, we don't... Um, we don't start with a lot of, of, uh, of music and dance, and uh, it's, it's not this kind of show, but there's a lot of music, there's lots of humor, and, and a lot of humanity in the show. But still, uh, it's different in a way. It builds very, very slowly, very uh, with a deep breath, and it doesn't, uh, um, it doesn't promise anything to the audience that it doesn't fulfill. So uh, I, I think we tune, we tune uh, the, the audience from the start, to, to certain level of of, uh, of uh, musicality in the ears and and the story uh, and they and they bit by bit understand where they are where they are in this evening special evening and join us uh, in this uh, in this uh, journey uh, slow journey uh, of of uh, understanding and feeling and and really uh, in this way you, you can relate to yourself and you see yourself uh, uh, in, in these circumstances, uh, maybe. I think that there's, I think that there's uh, a lot of music in the silence, you know, I think, I think, um, I think that, what do I think? I think that, um, <laughs> I think that there's something, there, there's something really human about seeing people take a moment to really, I mean, listening is, is the most important aspect of understanding one another. And so I think that like, there's something so so real and human about taking a second to make sure you're understanding what's being said, thinking about what you're going to say next. I mean, these are characters that don't don't share typically, especially not with strangers. I think I think it's really hard to open up to people people that you know, let alone people that you don't. Um, and I think that's why the silence is so important and is and is built in so deliberately because it gives the characters time to understand each other and also gives the audience time to process what they're hearing or seeing and and and, and digest it in their own way. Um, and so I think it's, you know, it's all the concerto, right? It's the music that you hear and then it's the absence of it. And, and it's all, it, it all pieces of adds up to the whole. Janet, Joe, anything to add? Yeah. Um, just in speaking to what Kobe said, musical notes don't ring without the spaces in between them. Right? Like music is a combination of a pause and a silence and then whatever note comes next in whatever arrangement. And I feel like one of the most beautiful things that was captured in this musical version of this film were the silences. In the film, 
There are deliberate, de deliberate, very long silences to get an idea of the space of Betatikva, of what that town is like, um, uh, the feeling of that town. Um, and the silences are so powerful because they make you sit in your discomfort and really think and question and be in the ickiness of it, right? Um, and process. And because these characters are trying to communicate in languages that are not their native languages, you need that silence in order to process and interpret what you are thinking, what you're going to say, what comes back to you, process that internally, and that takes time. Um, so I just think the writers and the creative team did such an extraordinary job of that, capturing that feeling from the film and putting it on stage. Definitely very nice to have that be the case with the show, and I think that it's, it's wonderful to keep the audience engaged deliberately from beginning to end without that interruption. I think it'd be challenging to come back, especially with this kind of show, to have that interruption and then step back into the, into the world. As an actor on stage, it's wonderful to be done in 90 minutes, I'm not going to lie. Um, so it definitely make it, there are benefits to it. I it think makes, in both two, it makes two show days more palatable. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I also think like, I, I think that um, like, uh, David Yazbek and Itamar and and Aaron Kohler and the original the film's original director writer and David Cromer I think like they created a piece that much like when you go to see like a Shakespearean play it takes you a couple minutes to tune your ear to what's going on and I think that it, the same carries for our show and so I think once people get into that mode it's important to keep the story going and flowing so that it can be um, a holistic experience and I think that without that break it really allows people to go on that full journey and then and then process everything after. I just want to say that uh, in the show built in, in musically in, in this way that it leads, one thing leads to another. So uh, if, if one scene uh, ends, uh, there's a, a piece of music that leads to the second scene and the third scene and it's, it's going on and on throughout uh, the whole play. So uh, the experience is a, a whole experience that you cannot uh, uh, cut it in, in uh, abruptly. Uh, there are there are four languages in the show. I think there's English, Arabic, uh, Hebrew, and then there's music. And in a lot of musicals, the, the the conceit is that music is what's what's delivered when the characters can no longer express themselves with just words. Um, and in this show, it's the music is what allows them to cut through languages and the borders that Sasson was speaking about to express those innermost things for themselves and for other people. So for Khaled, it's funny because my character is the least capable with English and struggles the most to express very simple things, the simplest things, um, to Poppy. And my character comes across as a bit of a, um, a, bit of a carefree guy um, and maybe uh, irresponsible to some others. But I think the moment that he has that he sees that someone like Poppy needs somebody to say something to him in a certain way, needs someone who sees him for who he is, that he has a problem, um, that he opens himself up to helping this guy who he's never met, who he'll never spend maybe another day with in his life, but takes a moment to, as, as Kobe said before, really listen to him and see him in that moment and to try and find a way to help him and music is the vessel through which I can help. And I think it works. Totally. I mean, you know, I think music and love, I think love is expressed in so many ways. You, you mentioned like there, a meal shared, which, which is another important scene in the, in the, in the show where, where people are gathered around a dinner table connecting and, and our scene. And I, I, I think what's so cool about that moment, Joe, is that you use jazz which is your which is your character's great love and ha and your introduction Chet Baker and your all the influences that you grew up loving, you use that to connect and calm and and you use jazz as a form of love to like help me because you see that I'm in a moment of distress and I think that that speaks to the 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 greater theme of music in the show is that music is really universal and um, it's it's. Uh, there, yeah, there's just there when when words fail, you know, music is something that can really bridge the gap. It's also to the extent that 
Khaled is listening to uh, West Coast jazz, music that was made in and around this area. It's fascinating the idea that in a in a monoculture, someone could be interested and drawn to this music. Gershwin is in the show. There are all these other sort of motifs that, that are expressed that you see that music is this force that cuts across cultures, that cuts across boundaries, and that it's not only the way that people express their innermost selves, but it's it's something that people are drawn to that hold close to their hearts till they die. And they can come from people who have been dead for years. And that music can speak to us through time and across cultures, and now it's international. And that show, you know, the show I think represents that power. And the fact that we're, we're, we're able to travel with the show and bring this kind of music to so many different places, places where people might not be familiar with traditional Arabic music, um, the oud, the darbuka, like the, you know, these are instruments that aren't not typically heard um, throughout the country. And so I think from the very first note of the overture, you, you, you as an audience member realize you're, you're about to experience something new and different. And when we talk about leaning in, I mean, that's something that really makes you lean in is those first chords and hearing those different instruments and seeing that incredible band playing in front of you. It's really a really special collective experience. If I may I just add that uh, I think all the characters in this play, uh, their, the way to, their, their way to solve their life, their salvation, you may say, is uh, through art, through music. Especially, uh, I can talk about my, my character, Taufik. Uh, his, I mean, his life is, 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 uh, is music. And he, he solves his all in, in his inner problems and inner anxieties and inner fears and inner uh, biography uh, um, that that he had through music. Dina, her character is also she wanted to be a dancer and she and she's longing and she's so curious to see uh, these people and she asked Tofik, how does it feel this way? Uh, the same with Papi and and uh, and Khaled and all all the characters are solving the their lives through through music and i think this is uh, one of the beauties of this uh, production so the, the answer is no with uh, many exclamation marks <laughs> uh, we we did the film in 2007 it was a very uh, low budget film we shot it in 21 days in the desert in the southern part of israel um, we we had a feeling that we have something special in our hands in our guts that's what we felt uh, but we haven't imagined until we um, invited to Cannes Festival and we saw the reactions of the audience. So we realized that we have really something like a, a landmark in, in Israeli cinema. And it's, till this day, it's considered one of the landmarks of the Israeli cinema. And it's, it's one a, a great success in, in uh, abroad and festivals and in Israel, of course, commercial and critical. In 2010, Oren Wolf, the producer of the of the Broadway production, uh, and this and this tour, uh, came to Israel and asked me if I would like to join for a Broadway show to do it. And I, I thought to myself, this is the craziest and unrealistic idea ever, uh, that I ever had. Uh, I was polite and say, yeah, yeah, of course I will do it. Uh, but uh, it, it took him. Uh, eight years to produce it first at Atlantic Theater and uh, off-Broadway and then on Broadway. Uh, he approached me in 2018 to join the show and take uh, the lead uh, after Tony Shalhoub did it. And uh, I, I managed to do it and uh, it's in, in a way, um, it's kind of uh, changed, uh, it's a life changer, you can say. Uh, it changed my life. I spent a year on Broadway with my family and then uh, I joined the tour uh, so I, I'm, and I'm still enjoying this this uh, uh, special experience uh, to come with something that I love, that I care about, and I, it's part of my life and my career, and and to enjoy it and to, at the same time to to encounter new places and new and new audiences. I mean, I, I can my, I myself was was a little bit. Uh, curious how I can how can they make uh, from this gentle film uh, um, a Broadway production? And when I first saw it, I was really I was really amazed. I mean, David Cromer and David Yazbek who added the the the, the, the music and the, the the soundtrack for this for this uh, uh, show uh, did something I mean incredible and and and, and managed to 
to, to uh, transform this delicate film into a delicate production, uh, a Broadway production that everybody can relate to. And, and it's, it's intriguing and it's funny and it's human and it's got life and music and sadness and it's got a variety of things. Uh, so, and I, I mean, and also the, the people that I know uh, were really amazed, the, the one who saw the film and saw the show and, and uh, really amazed by, by, by this fact. I think David Cromer and Yazbek and, and, and uh, Itamar Moses who adapted it made such a big justice as, as such and, 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 and make it uh, explicit, this experience. Uh, for the audience, I mean, uh, and, and I, I'm proud of it, and uh, we're all proud of it. And uh, the the best uh, thing to see is the the enjoyment of the of the audience. I mean, it's hard not to. I think this is one of the most beautiful roles that have been written for a woman in a very long time. And David Yazbek has done such an amazing job of capturing who Dina is through these songs. You know, the, the different aspects of her personality, her vulnerability, her strength, her resilience, her bitterness, her anger, her, you know, it's all there. And the music just is, is an expression, obviously, of who she is. And I think that's why he is so brilliant. You know, we really get who she is because of how she shares musically, not just through the lyrics, but also these melodies are so haunting and beautiful and introspective and sensitive and real, you know, and um, it's a true, true honor. And I feel so lucky to be stepping into these shoes every night and bringing her to life through these words and through this music. And there is such a variety of musical genres in the show, um, like with Khaled, you know, he is the jazz aficionado and it's, it's such a depiction of who he is on the inside. And um, the music is so authentic and he did just such a brilliant job of creating this score and, and it's so authentic. Um, and I think the audience really is able to enjoy and resonate with with the variety of music that is part of our show. Going off of what Janet said, I think there are these threads in the show, these narrative threads, and they, you know, they're sort of disparate. And some people may connect to the young, the young couple. Some people may connect to the young strangers, or some people may connect to these sort of hearts that have been through some some experiences and are finding something new. Um, and I find that the instrumental work in the show, the instruments on stage, there's a wonderful nature to the show that's not saying like, look, we're playing instruments. Look at the instruments. But the instrumentals provide this kind of emotional space to clear out. They give this kind of cleansing effect because they're abstract and they're so gentle. And so if you have these kinds of emotional responses to the moments in the show, the instrumentals find a way of just kind of taking you in their hand and then letting you go back into the story. And I find those to be the most enjoyable because also, as Yazbek um, wrote in the score, it's different every night. There's improvisation every single night. It's never the same. It's always interesting. So we're backstage listening and waiting to hear what Yoni will play or what Kane will do on the oud. It's, it's dynamic and it's exciting. It's never boring. Um, and for myself, you know, Yazbek wrote this kind of the oral transcription of a nervous breakdown for Kobe, and then the total opposite for me, something that's very smooth and very, um, you know, sort of hypnotic, if you will. And I, you know, to me, it's just the thrill of being able to sit back and let the song take you there, not run to the front of the stage and say, look at me, I'm exceptional. <laughs> Listen to me, scream, you know? I think there's a great satisfaction in being able to sit back and let the music take you if you're open to it. And I think hopefully the audience has the same experience. Very well said. Kobe, do you want to add to that? Sure. Um, my favorite moment. Well, I, my, I think my favorite lyric in the show is, is one that Janet sings. I might butcher it, but in, in waiting when, when she sings, when she comes out and she sings, um, you know what I think, there's two kinds of waiting. There's the kind where you're expecting something new or even strange. 
But this kind of waiting, you keep looking off out into the distance, even though you know the view is never going to change. Was that right? Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> I'm ready to go on. Um, and I think that's so beautiful. I mean, we, we talked in rehearsals a lot about, about the idea of waiting and how it's like the last stop before you fully lose hope, you know? Um, and I think that there, if there's something that's relatable from this past year, two years, it's that. Um, and I think that there is something um, so moving in the in that lyric about our what we've collectively been through and about how every day has looked the same for so long and, and no one really knows what's going to change. And we've sort of given up hope that something will and then out of nowhere, something does change and, and, and it's so unexpected and beautiful. So I think that that lyric is so beautiful and captures that so well. And the last time I was in this building was for my uh, uh, winter formal in 10th in grade. So I'm happy to be, <laughs> it's a very different circumstance being back here now. Um, UCLA Bruin, by the yeah, way. UCLA Bruin as well. Lots of, lots of LA pride. Um, oh man. Well, I think like one of my favorite things about being an Angelino is that I feel like Angelinos are really excited about and eager to connect with people that aren't like them through food, through music, um, through storytelling, through art. Um, through shared experiences. There's such a rich cultural life here and people are really open to trying new things and, and experiencing each other's cultures. And so I think that that is something that this show uh, offers up to, to people here. Um, and I, I think it's a story of, of resilience and, uh, and hope. And I think again, you know, after the, the tough couple years that our city's had, um, what I think it's a perfect story to, re to return to about um, experiencing each other and, and connecting with each other and, and sharing music and, you know, sharing food and sharing laughter and, and tears. And I think all of it, I mean, it's, it's, it's so many of my favorite experiences um, growing up here and, and being an adult here as well have been, um, you know, movies at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery and hearing music at the Hollywood Bowl and, 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 and getting food at the farmer's market. I mean, they're going to the beach. Like there's so many, beautiful experiences to be had here and 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 all of those experiences are are shared with people that don't necessarily look like you or speak the same language you do but that's the beautiful thing about it is that people like to share experiences um and, and be in places together and connect in that way and so i think that that it's really exciting to be here for me personally because i've you know family friends and everyone gets to come see the show but um on a larger scale, just for just an, just another experience to add to like the rich cultural tapestry of the city, I think the band's visit is is perfect for that. We said it so beautifully. Uh, I went to a performing arts middle school and high school here, and looking back now, I think one of the most wonderful things about it was that I was exposed to people from every my best every culture. My best friend is growing up is Greek and Mexican. Our group of friends consisted of Korean, African American, I mean Mexican, all across the board. And growing up with that diversity now really set me up to be accepting and open of other people. I mean, I remember going to the Greek Orthodox Church with her and having to cover my head and wear a long skirt. And yet it was not what I saw in my home, but it definitely opened me up to what life was like for other people. And Again, this is what this show is about. You are exposed to different cultures and different people, and it's a true reflection of human existence. And if you're available to it, it can really change your life in extraordinary ways. I think we might, uh, we should uh, remember that it's, uh, I think it's one of the strong points of, of this show is that the fact that it's the for the first time I think on Broadway we see uh, mu Arab music, uh, Israeli, uh, Israeli uh, language, Arab language, Egyptian and uh, it's, it's f f for my best knowledge is the first time that we can see we see it in Broadway and you see the curiosity and the uh, and, and enthusiasm of the audience to to experience uh, such uh, a culture that they that they don't uh, um, that they don't know that, that some some of them haven't heard never heard and um, all of a sudden they they exposed to uh, uh, to this culture especially in uh, nowadays that we are trying to expose many uh, cultures and many languages and many uh, people from many races to to get them uh, um, um, approached to the audience. 
And I think this is one of the best uh, and the things that I'm proud of this show uh, and this film that he, it, it came across the audience um, and, and, and managed to, to interest them and, and open them uh, to, to that culture. I think what is so great about the show is that it is, a, I mean, we have Israelis playing Egyptians, Egyptians playing Israelis. Uh, that in itself is so beautiful that in this world, that is possible. And knowing all of the political situation that has been in existence for so long, the fact that we can portray a world where it doesn't matter where you come from, those differences are set aside because we are human beings. And one of the wonderful things that our director pointed out is like when you are, when you come up against a stranger who is having a challenge or a difficulty, our human instinct is to step in and help. That's what Dina does. She doesn't see that they're from Egypt, that there may be some conflict. No, she sees that this is a group of people who are having a challenging time and she can offer some help and because she opens herself up and is willing to take that initiative her life changes and that's I think such a basic human experience as far as myself being a Latina playing an Israeli woman there are so many <laughs> similarities in the cultures it's very easy to step into this space and inhabit this character because particularly being of Cuban descent, um, you know, we are part of that Latin diaspora here in the US. Uh, my parents left Cuba seeking political asylum and hoping for a better life. And um, it's, it's, it's very close to my heart. Um, and so yes, it's easy for me to grab from my experience as a Latin person and, and being displaced. Um, in creating a life somewhere else. You know, going off of what Janet said, you know, our show is a cross-cultural exchange. You know, our cast, our company, our management, you know, we all come from different places, different experiences, different countries. And, um, you know, when I first saw the show on Broadway and I saw Tony Shalhoub in a weird way, I saw my grandfather. And when I heard Gershwin, I remember his favorite record was um, Rhapsody in Blue, and he would play that so loud, and I thought it was so, you know, funny that this man who came from Lebanon was obsessed with George Gershwin. And when Dina sings about, you know, sitting with her mother and watching films, I think of being in my grandmother's den and watching King and I. Again, it's this exchange of, of, of different types of cultural, you know, artifacts being exchanged across time and across boundaries. And I think the beauty of the band's visit is that it's a show about unexceptional people in an unexceptional place. It's not high drama. These people are not superheroes. They're not, you know, trying to tell you anything. It's about their day-to-day -day life. And it's about opening themselves up to an unexpected encounter. And when you're dealing with a show that has um, these people who come from areas that are typically defined in the international community by conflict, it's easy for us to engage with the idea that these places, that these people's lives, it's a constant fight for survival. But in the end, there's a day-to-day -day life that people have. And there is a day-to-day -day life of unexceptional people in unexceptional places. And their experiences are exceptional if we choose to listen to them. So that's, you know, how I feel about the show. What can I add to that? Um, you know, I think bringing it back to the music and the language, my, my mom's family comes from Israel. My grandma was born in Israel, emigrated here when she was a teenager. And I certainly never thought I'd be speaking Hebrew on a Broadway stage. So that's exciting for me. Um, and I think when we, when we bring it back to the language and the music, art is how you change hearts and minds. And I think when, when we talk about offering represent authentic representation, um, what a beautiful story to be sharing about people who come from Israel, who come from Egypt, who are, who speak Hebrew and speak Arabic and, and, uh, play this kind of music and how, what a beautiful opportunity to offer that up to audiences, um, and allow them to experience this culture through that lens. I think that there, there's nothing better. I mean, I, I just think that it's, it's really, really remarkable to hear those languages and hear this music. Um, on a on the stage of the Dolby Theater.
Ceremonial Police Orchestra. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Really appreciate it.